Lesson 8.4, multiply a fraction or mixed number by a whole number. We learned how to rename mixed numbers as fractions greater than 1 in video 7.6. It's linked in the description if you haven't seen it. We also learned to rename fractions greater than 1 as mixed numbers the other way around. And we can multiply a fraction or a mixed number by a whole number by using renaming. In video 8.3, we modeled multiplying fractions by whole numbers. We have a whole number 3 that we're multiplying to the fraction 4 fifths. And we learned that we multiply the whole number to the numerator. We have 3 times 4, which is equal to 12. We write it over that same denominator. We have 12 fifths. And we put it into simplest form as a mixed number, 2 and 2 fifths. Now we'll go over what I did here a couple of times in this video, so stick with me. We can multiply whole numbers by mixed numbers by changing the mixed numbers into fractions greater than 1. So here we're multiplying a whole number 2 by a mixed number 1 and 1 fourth. We multiply the 1 times 5, the whole number 1 to the denominator, we get a 5, and we add the numerator 4, we get a 9, we write it over that denominator. So as a fraction greater than 1, it becomes 9 fifths. Now we multiply 2 times 9 fifths by multiplying the whole number to the numerator. That's 2 times 9, that's 18. And we write it over that same denominator. We put this in simplest form by looking at 18 fifths as a division problem. We think 18 divided by 5. How many times will 5 fit into 18? Well, 5 times 3 is 15. So this quotient is going to be our whole number 3, and the remainder 3 is going to be our numerator. We learned how to do this in video 7.6, but we're going to do it several more times in this video to help you. Our product is 3 and 3 fifths. Fractions greater than 1 are also called improper fractions. Their numerator is greater than their denominator. We have a numerator 6 that's greater than the denominator 4. 6 fourths is a fraction greater than 1, which is also called an improper fraction. So here are the steps to multiply a whole number by a mixed number. We have a whole number 3 that we're multiplying to the mixed number 2 and 2 thirds. The first thing we do is rename the 2 and 2 thirds as a fraction greater than 1. We do it very quickly by multiplying the whole number 2 to the denominator, 2 times 3 is 6, and then we add the numerator. So we're going to do multiplication, then addition. We have 2 times 3 plus 2. That gives us an 8, and we write it over that same denominator, 3. We have 8 thirds. The next thing we do is we multiply the whole number to the numerator, 3 times 8. And we write it over that same denominator. That gives us 24 thirds. Now we use division to write the fraction greater than 1 in its simplest form. We think 24 divided by 3. Well, 3 times 8 is 24, and the quotient is going to be our whole number 8. Bob exercises for one and a half hours every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. How many hours does Bob exercise each week? Well, we've got Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's three days. So Bob exercises three days each week for one and a half hours each day. We're going to have to do three times one and a half. We write the one and a half mixed number as a fraction greater than one. We do one times two is two, plus one is three. We write it over that denominator. We have three halves. Now we multiply the whole number to the numerator. We have 3 times 3, that's equal to 9. Written over the same denominator, we have 9 halves. And we can put this in simplest form by thinking 9 divided by 2. 2 can fit into 9 four times. So that's our whole number, 4, the quotient. And 2 times 4 is 8. We have 1 left over, 1 remainder. That remainder becomes the numerator, and we use the same denominator. We have 4 and a half. Now we can see what's happening as we write it as a mixed number. We got the answer 9 halves, and 9 halves is 
a half nine times. We have nine halves here. We put a half and a half together, we get one whole. We put another half and half together, we get another whole. We put another half and half together and get another whole. We do it again, we get another whole. We have one, two, three, four whole and a half left over. That's how we got the four and a half. We can also look at it as there's a two halves, same numerator and denominator, so that equals one whole. That would be these two. One half and one half makes two halves. We have another two halves, we have another two halves, and another two halves. We have a half left over, and we're thinking how many two halves are in nine halves. We have four and a half left over, we have four and a half. When we multiply a fraction by a whole number, the product will be less than that whole number. So if we multiply three times one half, whatever the product is, it's going to be less than this three. We do three times the numerator one, that gives us a three. We write it over the denominator, we have three halves. And three halves is equal to two halves plus one half. That gives us one and a half. Now if the product is not less than the whole number, we made a math error and we need to check our math. And one and a half is less than three, so our answer makes sense and is reasonable. So this is when we're multiplying a whole number to just a fraction. It's going to, the product is going to be less than the whole number. But when we multiply a mixed number by a whole number, the product will be greater than the whole number. Now we're multiplying a mixed number by a whole number. We change the two and two fifths into a two times five is 10, plus two is 12. We write it over the denominator. We have 12 fifths. Now we multiply it to the four whole. We multiply the four whole to the numerator 12. That gives us a 48. We write it over the same denominator. We get 48 fifths. We write it in simplest form by thinking 48 divided by 5. That gives us 9 and 3 fifths. Now, if the product, this 9 and 3 fifths, is not greater than the whole number, we made a math error and we need to check our math. But 9 and 3 fifths is greater than 4, the whole number factor. So our answer makes sense and is reasonable. Dave is building a bookshelf and cut a piece of wood into four smaller pieces that were two and a half feet each. What was the length of wood before it was cut? So we think four pieces of two and a half feet equals the wood before it was cut. We multiply four times the two and a half feet each. We change this into a fraction greater than one. We multiply two times two is four. We add the numerator one, we get five. We write it over that denominator, we have five halves. Now we can multiply the whole number to the numerator. Four times five is equal to 20. It's written over that same denominator, we have 20 halves. We think 20 divided by two, 20 divided by two, well that's 10. That means it was 10 feet. The length of wood before it was cut was 10 feet long. So here's what's happening. We had four times two and a half. Using repeated addition, that would be two and a half plus two and a half plus two and a half plus two and a half. That's four add-ins. And we can change these and put the twos together. Two plus two plus two plus two. That equals eight. Then we can add the halves. One half plus one half plus one half plus one half. Well, this makes one whole and this makes one whole. We have eight, nine, 10 feet. And we can see what's happening in four times two and a half by using the distributive property. We have four times two and a half, and we can think of it as four times two plus one half. Here's our two and a half. We distribute the four to the two and multiply them, and we add it, because there's a plus sign here, to four times a half. That's going to give us four times two plus four times a half. We have four times two plus four times a half. 
we think of two and a half as a two plus half and change the order of the add ends with the commutative property of addition because we can add in any order, can't we? Well, four times two is eight and four times a half is four times the one numerator over the two denominator. It's going to give us four halves. That's eight plus two. That's 10 feet of wood. So do you see how the distributive property, we distributed the four to both add-ins and then rewrote them in parentheses like this. And because it was a plus sign here, we had a plus sign between the parentheses. And you should remember the distributive property from last year in third grade. We did that in chapter four. The identity property of multiplication states that the product of any number in one is that number. The number keeps its identity when multiplied by one. We have one times three fourths. It keeps its identity and stays three fourths. Doesn't matter how large the number is or if it's a fraction or decimal. We have one times 99, it's gonna equal 99. He kept his identity too. So we can write seven and one fourth as a fraction it will become a fraction greater than one. Seven and one fourths will become 29 fourths. So breaking it down, looking at it using the identity property, we have seven and one fourth. We look at it as a seven plus a one fourth. And seven is seven times one. Identity property, it stays seven, doesn't it? We can look at this one as a four fourths, same numerator and denominator, it's equal to one. And we multiply seven times four fourths by multiplying the seven to the numerator four. That's gonna give us a 28. We write it over that same denominator four. We have 28 fourths. And we add that one fourth that's been following along. 28 fourths plus one fourth, we add the numerators, we get 29 fourths. So you can see how it broke down, but if you wanna do this quickly, the faster way is to just multiply the whole number to the denominator. Seven times four is 28, plus the one numerator is 29. We get 29 fourths. We're going counterclockwise. Sorry about the focus there. We're going counterclockwise. We first multiply to the denominator, then add the numerator. So we have two different operations. Don't get confused here. Multiplication, then addition, okay? If this really confuses you, we're gonna go over this again in a couple minutes, but you can also watch video 7.6 when we first learned about it. And we can write 29 fourths as a mixed number. It's a fraction greater than one. We can change it into a mixed number. We think of it as division. We think how many groups of four fourths are in 29 fourths? We think 29 divided by four. Four fits into 29 seven times. That seven quotient is going to be the number of holes. We have seven whole. Four times seven is 28. We get a one remainder. That remainder one is the numerator as the number of fourths left over. And the denominator is the same denominator that we had for the 29 fourths. It's actually the divisor when we did the division. There are seven groups of four fourths with one fourth left over. We have seven and one fourth as a mixed number. So let's review this very quickly again. We have two and three fourths. We wanna change it into a fraction greater than one. We multiply the whole number to the denominator and get an eight. Two times four is eight. We add the numerator three. Two times four is eight plus three is 11. We get 11 fourths because we're writing it over that same denominator. Here we have three and two fifths. We do three times five is 15, plus two more is 17. We get 17 fifths. We're going counterclockwise. We multiply to the denominator, then add the numerator. So let's end with doing some higher order thinking skills. We need to find the unknown numbers. We have some unknown whole number times one and one fourth, is equal to three and three fourths. And we can find this unknown number by writing the mixed numbers, both of these, as fractions, as fractions greater than one. We have one and one fourth, we do one times four is four, plus one is five, that gives us five fourths. Here we have 
3 and 3 for us, we do 3 times 4 is 12, plus the 3 numerator is 15. We have 15 fourths. We think some number times 5 fourths is equal to 15 fourths. And if you remember multiplying fractions and whole numbers, we're going to multiply the whole number to the numerator. So that means some number times 5 is equal to 15. Some whole number times this numerator 5 is going to equal that numerator 15. Well, 3 times 5 is equal to 15. That tells us the missing number is a 3. Here we have 4 times 2 with 2 and a missing denominator. But it's equal to 9 and 3 fifths. Well, the denominator in the product is 5. So the missing denominator must be 5. And we can put a 5 here and then do the multiplication to see if it works. If that's a 5, we'll have 2 and 2 fifths. We need to write these as fractions greater than 1. We have 2 times 5 is 10, plus the numerator 2. That's 12 fifths. For the product, we have 9 times 5 is 45, plus 3. That's 48 fifths. To multiply them, we multiply the whole number to the numerator, so we have 4 times 12. That is equal to 48. And we have a 5 for a denominator. We have 48 fifths. Yes, it fits. So that must be a 5, like in the product. So the key to finding these unknown numbers is changing the mixed numbers into fractions greater than 1. And the key to multiply a fraction or mixed number by a whole number is to rename them. In our next lesson, 8.5, we're going to be doing some word problems. We're going to do comparison word problems with fractions. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.